ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to hopefully not come across as a naysayer here, but I'd like to talk about the next two questions that were posed by NIPA to Spark Partners. The first being whether or not NIPA should enter into the gas business. Now, there is definitely a measurement that we came up with in our analysis that shows the capabilities of NIPA are actually quite low for being able to move into this business. Doesn't mean you couldn't do it, but that means you would have to grow or buy a lot of capability that currently doesn't exist today. On the pros and on the con ends of things, there are good and bad on both sides of it. Obviously, being a public power authority, it would be nice to be in this business for the state of New York and for the ratepayers in New York and the citizens of the state. Also, NIPER itself uses gas as a fuel for much of its gas generation facilities, at least on a dual fuel basis with some of the diesel equipment that NIPA has. There are also potential savings for customers if NIPA, as a public authority, were able to do for them. On the negative side, though, again, resources is going to be a big problem. There is limited existing contracts with buyers of the gas that NIPA would be able to capitalize on, where many other competitors in this area would have that. And there would be general community opposition, amongst other cons that we came up with, in terms of NIPA being the state controlling gas, and that always can raise some questions. One of the game changers that came out of this in our research was the fact that the Marcellus shale gas actually is going to be a massive amount of extra volume of gas available to everybody in the country. The projection is by 2035 that it actually will be almost 50 percent of the gas that's being provided. A massive amount of supply with the supply having been growing to this point and is anticipated to continue to grow on trend all the way out to 2034. Basically gas production is on a high and it will, depending on particular market conditions, actually be a buyer's market. NIPA benefits from these prices, and quite honestly, we do not see how NIPA can add benefit to its customers by going into this business. The next question I'd like to talk about is whether or not NIPA, which you asked us to look into, should become the sole transmission owner for New York State. We again did a lot of research in this area and we did come up with the fact that NIPA does have a moderate level of capability for being able to do this. After all, NIPA does control a large portion of the transmission lines in New York State today and maintains it very well. Most of them are at the high voltage end of things, but still the skill set is there. Looking at the pros and cons of this, we found that Again, this is something that would fit in with Albany's goal. New York Power Authority is a authority and represents New York State and should be, if you think about it, in charge of such a critical infrastructure for the entire state. So it would fit in well with those goals. Also, it is anticipated that this could improve statewide reliability by having one entity in charge of it. On the negative side, however, projected capital costs if NIPA needed to expand into areas that currently are not covered, would be quite extensive in the area of two to eight million dollars per mile. But more importantly, it is anticipated that 30 percent of the existing lines that are out there are going to need replacement or enhancement over the next 15 to 20 years, with many of them being the ones that are not currently under NIPA's control. So the bottom line is, we do not recommend that, New York, that NIPA become the prime or sole entity that controls the New York power grid. However, there is a consortium called Transco of New York State companies that are in the game and are putting their thoughts together and their brain power together to come up with the plans for transmission in New York State going forward from this point for the next 20, 30 years, and we believe that it is very important for NIPA to join that group. It would give the ratepayers of New York a real voice in that organization. Again, 
There will be continuation in terms of the maintenance as is being done very well by NIPA today. That doesn't go away. But one thing that we did come up with was that smart grid technologies will actually play a role in transmission lines, mostly the high-powered ones that NIPA currently runs today. If we could make those smart grid distribution points and put those in place, then you would have a grid that would be more resilient to problems going forward. With that thought in mind, I would now like to turn this over to John, who will go into smart grid in general in a lot more detail.